Hi, welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in spiritual growth, bringing from powerful Word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. First, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it is what you hear that builds you up. It is what you hear that you engage that truly profits you. So I encourage you as about to listen to this Word of God. Please open up your heart because God is about to visit you. God is about to transform your life. God is about to turn your life around. So I encourage you, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do subscribe, like, and share this message with others. While I prayed and prepared for this meeting, even before today, God is going to be visiting us across several areas, but there are four major areas that came to me by revelation. And God told me these are the core areas he's going to be dealing with tonight. Number one, restoration of spiritual fire. This, the Lord told me there are people who will come in need of restoration. Number two, healing. I know we're going to be ministering deliverance, but tonight God wants to heal. He truly heals. The area of healing. Number three is the area of stagnation. This came to me by revelation. Stagnation means that something pegs you at a level and you do not make progress. Consistent with the investment of your efforts. And then number four, God tonight wants to break by prophecy financial limitations. So there are many things that God would do, but I'm announcing this to you as it came to me by revelation. So that we'll connect by faith. Are we still together? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll start our reading from verse 18. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth and he gives an instruction that we need to learn. He says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Please pay attention. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Next verse. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? It's a question, 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. 22 for the jews require a sign and the greeks seek after wisdom but we preach christ crucified unto the jews a stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness uh-huh but unto them that are called both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god Take note of 24, we're coming there. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Go to verse 24, please. It says, but unto them who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God. And Christ is is the wisdom of god please pay attention the word christ comes from the word christos it means the anointed one which is jesus christ principally but it also means the anointing the anointed one revealing himself together with his anointing that is the word christ so principally is a name for Jesus, but it also extends to all who are anointed with the Spirit. Are we together? Remember the Bible says the kingdoms of this world, Revelations eleven fifteen, are become the kingdoms of our God and of we, his Christ. And he shall reign forever. Are we together? So back to 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 24. It was a revelation God gave me that will guide our receiving tonight. The Bible says, when the anointing of God, Christ and his anointing, 
is revealed in the midst of his people it operates in two dimensions number one there are people who the anointing will be revealed to as the power of God. But there are others the anointing will be revealed to as the wisdom of God. That both dimensions of revelation is still Christ. Are we together? There are problems that people have in their life that require the power of God head on. For instance, attacks of darkness for instance situations that need to be corrected supernaturally for such you don't need any counseling you do not need any discussion there has to be an encounter with the supernatural power of god but there are other situations that require the wisdom of god not just the power of god the bible says when christ is revealed he is revealed in the midst of his people as the power of God, but also as the wisdom of God. So there are people you came here tonight and what you need is the anointing, but revealed as the wisdom of God. God begins to give you insight as to what you need to do to provide answers to the needs that you have many issues in our lives i wrote here require the power of god many issues they require the power of god to supernaturally correct unfavorable conditions health conditions for instance demonic conditions for instance would always require the power of god to supernaturally correct those conditions the bible is full of conditions that were changed supernaturally by the power of god but there are many other situations that require the wisdom of god that means you must understand the principles of the kingdom are located for that result you desire this is very important if you do not understand this it may be difficult to receive maximally that means in a meeting like this you can find people falling under the anointing you can find people receiving things a divine touch from God and usually people stand up and wonder what now happened to me why did I fall for instance why is my body shaking why is this supernatural experience happening and many people return back and cannot discern what just happened the Bible says when the anointing when Christ is revealed he comes to some as the power of God but he comes to some as the wisdom of God there are people as you fall under that anointing you don't have to fall but I'm saying for instance if that happens to you you can stand up and what happened to you was the light of God the solution to your problem just came to you just because you fell does not mean it's a demon going out you can stand up from that experience and supernatural insight as to what to do christ as the wisdom of god christ as the power of god many times when we come for meetings like this People just focus on the charismatic dimensions of the dealings of God and people fall, they rise, they cry, they shout and they return back and do not know what to do with these experiences. Paul is giving us an explanation right now that every time you see the anointing, the Holy Spirit and his anointing moving in the midst of his people, Christ is being revealed to some the power of of God to correct unfavorable conditions but to some he's bringing you impartation of grace and knowledge for instance we're dealing with issues here of financial limitation you can see that um, there are people for instance who it is just a demonic thing no matter what they do they cannot rise they cannot experience that dimension of the glory of God for such people you need the anointing to come as the power that breaks that yoke are you seeing now but there are many people who have been they do not have the wisdom to make correct financial decisions the anointing will still come to them but 
it will now come as the wisdom of God. You will hear something through the word. While we are ministering, you will hear something all of us are not hearing. And that becomes the grace. You will go back from this miracle service, for instance, with a grace to now begin to walk in keeping with the principles that make for increase. The anointing still came to you. Because most people don't know what to do with the anointing. And so when we receive, when we shout, Amen, receive the anointing, receive grace, Amen. Some fall, some cry, some shout, some roll, and you know, all kinds of things happen to people. And at the end of it, we stand up, we dust ourselves, we share the grace, and we go back. And sadly, many do not finish up that process to receive the testimony desired. 1 Corinthians 1.24. Let's look at that scripture again. But to them which are called say i am called one more time say i am called how do you know you are called acts chapter 2 from verse 39 i believe acts chapter 2 for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the lord our god shall call we didn't just come, we were called. So I know that I am called. And the Bible says, those who he called, he foreknew, he predestined. God called me, called me to reveal his glory, called me to reveal his grace. And the Bible says, when that anointing comes upon the called, it is Christ revealed as the power of God. Christ revealed as the wisdom of God. Is someone learning so that when we begin to pray your heart is expectant and it does not mean he has to reveal himself as the power or the wisdom he can reveal himself as both that should be your prayer that Lord you come to me as your wisdom and your power wisdom to rise and to reign wisdom to rule let me show you something about the power and the excellency of wisdom proverbs chapter 8 let's start from verse 1 very quickly so we can begin to pray doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice verse 2 she standed in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths she cried at the gate, wisdom now, at the entry of the city. This is already a revelation. Wisdom has gone to the city before you and she's crying from the city and coming in at all the doors. Verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, simple there means void of understanding understand wisdom O ye fools be ye of an understanding heart here for i will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right thing wisdom now is speaking my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination unto my lips it says all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or perverse in them verse 9 they are all in plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that findeth knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Do you know what this is saying? Wisdom is saying if they keep me here and they keep silver, make no mistake to choose silver. When you choose me, you have chosen more than silver. Look at the power of wisdom. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her. You have to pause here and think of all the things you desire. I desire a house. I desire a car. I desire to move from a tenant to a landlord. And wisdom is saying these things are mundane compared to the power you have when you have me. That means for the many prayer requests you have written, 10, 15, 8, 9 of them, wisdom is saying, if you choose me, all of those things will no longer become requests. 12. We'll find somewhere to stop. I, wisdom, dwell with 
prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. 13. It says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. 14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So wisdom is not weak by me. Now wisdom is speaking. Kings here does not just mean the male. Royalty. That means if it is true that the Bible has made you royalty, that we are a kingdom of priests. He's saying if you want to reign in life, you will need me. And by me, princes decree justice. 16. It says, by me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor, this is what I'm looking for. Riches and honor are with me. So, when you want to withdraw your money, you go to an ATM. You don't need the ATM, really. But because the ATM contains something that you need, is that true? You go to the ATM and slot in a card, type whatever you need to type, and it brings out cash, physical cash, you hold it there. So he's saying riches and honor are with me. The same way money is inside an ATM. Wisdom is saying when you come, there is riches and honor. You know what honor is? Honor means to be perceived to match your true worth. When you are honored, it means that men give you the credit and the perception that truly matches your worth your sacrifice and even surpasses it in many respects it is possible to be a noble person and yet not have honor on your life and you will be perceived far below your true worth are we together yes when god brings you honor he lifts you to match your sacrifice he lifts you to match your knowledge he lifts you to match your level of spiritual investment and will even surpass it for you he says riches and honor are with me yea lasting riches that come with righteousness let 19 be the last verse it says my fruit is better than gold than fine gold and my revenue the salary that i pay you is more than choice silver say wisdom christ revealed as the wisdom of god my dear people listen to me when the wisdom of god truly lands upon your life right from where you are you will begin to rise in a way that will first surprise you before it surprises everybody around you the assignment of wisdom is to dress you with the robe of royalty Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he's not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message, it means 
the time that you dedicated listening to them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.